Hey guys, it's Alexander Williamson here with The Secret History Living in Your Aquarium. Today we're going to be talking about one of my favorite fish in the entire world, and that is catfish. Catfish as a whole. So we are going to be going over 10 of the most amazing facts about catfish. So coming in, starting off right away at number one, we've got the fact that catfish are the most diverse group of fresh and saltwater fish in the world. So there are over 3,470 species that have Latin names already, and there could be double or even triple that if you count the variants. So for instance, we've got Corydoras here, and this one right here would be called a Venezuelan red and its Latin name is Corydora Aeneas, whereas these are Corydora Venezuela orange, but they're the same Latin species. So they only count as one of those 3,470 species. Back here, we've got a leopard frog pleco, and they come in yellow, orange, black, white, all different colors of that stripe pattern. So in all of the fish in the entire world, catfish make up 10.8% of the biomass. So one in 10 fish in the world is going to be a catfish. Now, beyond that, out of all the vertebrates in the world, mammals and reptiles and birds, 5.5% or 1 in 20 animals in the entire world that are vertebrates are catfish. So just a ginormous group. And some of them live only a number of years. Some of them live 60, 70, 80 years. And they run the gamut from being carnivorous to uh, de detrivores eating uh, food and waste and plant matter on the bottom to herbivores and everything in between. They're truly incredible fish. So coming in at number two, we have that catfish are the largest bony fish in fresh water and also one of the smallest as well. So the Mekong giant catfish has a record size coming in at 646 pounds as the biggest catch, and that was in the year 2005 in Thailand. That fish was uh, over 8 feet 9 inches long, and other Mekong giant catfish have been found to be 10 foot 8 inches long is the length record. So just incredible size. I mean, if we're looking at this aquarium, that is the size of three of these aquariums end to end to give you an idea of size. From here to the window and the size of a grizzly bear in weight. Now, on the far other end of the spectrum, we have species like Corydora uh, hebrosus or Hestatus and Pygmaeus. So we have these dwarf catfish and tiny catfish such as anchor catfish. Some of them come in at less than a third of an inch, 32 millimeters long, full grown, and many of them weigh only a few grams, less than half an ounce. So just incredible fish, and that's full grown. You can also see that the babies of some of the ancestors up here are a mere millimeters across and not even a centimeter long swimming up there uh, when they're small. So let's come in to number three on the facts and talk about something that may actually save your fish's life save you money, and save you grief. And that is that Corydoras are, Corydora are the lovely little species we have here, and that they are often a venomous species. So 
What's the difference between poisonous and venomous? Well, it's been known that they had poison in that when we put them in bags for shipping sometimes, they would actually uh, foam up the water. The water would get milky, it would look foamy, and out of nowhere, uh, the fish would die. Well, it turns out that this was not just a poison they were secreting. This was a venom, a venom as in a toxin that they inject on demand. And basically, these fish have a little organ or sac right behind their pectoral fins, and their pectoral fin has a bony ray on it. Now, some of the species of Corydora have a V-shaped bone there, or a little slot sort of shape, and that can actually be used as a spike to inject poison. And because Corydora are so common in our hobby, you'll have known probably a handful of the species that are most commonly known to be venomous and can oftentimes uh, kill themselves when getting ready for being shipped. And I'll tell you how you can prevent that in just a moment. But coming in as some of the most well-known poisonous varieties, we have the Corydora sturbi, the Panda Corydora, the Mete Corydora, the Adolfoi, and the Rabaudi Corydora, as well as the Trilineatus, which gets sold as the Corydora julii frequently. Now, all of these have the ability to poison the water they are in, and not only can they attack enemies that are eating them or stepping on them or grabbing them, they can actually release this when nervous or scared. So the best thing to do when you're shipping a group of them is to put them in the water that you grab them in out of the tank, agitate them slightly with your net or with some sort of stick you know, a chopstick or something. And then after a few minutes, you don't want to hurt them, but you do want to startle them slightly. And after a few minutes, uh, you want to change that water and replace it with new fresh dechlorinated water and then ship them or then transport them in the bag or bucket or however you want to do it. So here we have the mama lemon pleco. We have a father lemon pleco with the big bristles on his nose here and the big head. And then in this tank we have, like I showed you earlier, babies of various sizes growing out juvenile uh, lemon plecos, 144As if you're going by the Laura Caraday or L number series. So coming in at number four, we have another incredible fact. And that incredible fact is that catfish, no matter the variety, even these here, these are another pleco here. These are called green dragons, and they're an ancestrous cirrhosis variety. Long fin. Here you can see we've got another long fin with uh, leucistic, similar to albino coloring. But they have taste buds all over their entire body. Some species has, have up to 100,000 chemoreceptors or taste buds on the outside of their body. You know, butterflies and flies have taste buds on their feet, and that seems weird. Well, catfish, as a species, not only do they have a lateral line that can sense many things, do they have incredible barbels that can directionally sense things, but they have the ability to sense and taste the water all around them. And specifically, they're looking for amino acids and they're able to hunt down small crustaceans, worms, uh, algae, whatever it is that, it, that they enjoy. These ones here happen to be eating spirulina algae, but whatever it is they enjoy to eat, that's what they're searching for with those taste buds all down their body and they're mapped to the same part of the brain as taste buds that would be in their mouth, the taste buds on their barbels. So, number five, while we're talking about the incredible abilities of catfish and the diversity of catfish that we see in the world, we have the ability of some catfish and their skin not only to taste, but to breathe. So some catfish are able to get out of the water 
and walk. We have a catfish known as the walking catfish that has invaded parts of actually the UK, Germany, and South America, as well as uh, Florida, Texas, and Louisiana. Now, this catfish, the walking catfish, can actually get out of water and it can breathe air through an organ similar to lungs, basically, by gulping air. Other catfish, however, can breathe underwater through their skin by absorbing oxygen when the water is low in oxygen and they can't get enough running through their gills, they can actually absorb it through their skin if they're scaleless and have plates or don't have plates at all and are scaleless. Here you're looking at some Corydora panda. Uh, that's their Latin name and you can see why. They look like little pandas. These happen to be one of the venomous varieties. So, coming in number six on our list, we have one of the oddest things that catfish do. And to survive, catfish do many strange things, but one of the weirder things they do, the Cynodonis multipunctata, is a catfish found in Lake Tanganyika in Africa. It's one of the Rift Valley lakes and they actually find a cichlid friend, so they look for a cichlid fish, something along the lines of this fish here. And what they do is they follow this fish until it has babies. Once it has babies, they then lay their eggs at the same exact time as the cichlid. They lay their eggs, and they're known as a cuckoo catfish, and the fish will actually scoop up the eggs after they're laid, its own and the catfish's eggs. By the way, we have some red lizard catfish here, another incredible species that blends right in with the f foliage and uh, sticks and environment that they live in. These guys eat algae. But they actually live in the mouths, the baby Cynodonis cuckoo catfish live in the mouths of two various cichlid species in Lake Tanganyika and when they hatch they come out and they eat all the little babies in the mouth of these mouth brooding fish who actually allow their babies to come out and forage and feed and then when they're ready to travel the mother opens her mouth and the fish the babies go back in well the cuckoo catfish babies go right back in her mouth and go along their merry way and she never knows that she was raising the wrong species. Meanwhile, the catfish go about their merry way and have more babies spreading around their genetics. So just another really cool fact about one particular catfish species. Coming in at number seven, we have the fact that even in these dark tanks that are very dense and very, very silty, catfish have great eyesight. Many people think that because of their barbels, catfish are blind. Right here we have some salt and pepper longfin Corydora. These are a really fun uh, version, and these ones are a blue variety. In, in natural light, they look bright blue. And you can see they've got the long dorsal and pectoral fins. So, not only do they have good eyesight, they have incredible senses all over. And like we've been talking about, their barbels are able to sense amino acids a million times better than human taste buds. They can sense one drop per trillion molecules of the various amino acids that they look for. And that's across a handful of different species. Here we have another little cichlid just to show you, just so you can imagine what the cuckoo catfish, uh, where they'd be laying their eggs and what sort of fish would be carrying them around, so to speak. Well, so they have the ability to sense those amino acids and go for them. And when I was talking about the walking catfish that can get out, 
That brings us to number <laughs> number eight on our list, which is the walking catfish can actually move across land. So you knew they could breathe with their uh, skin or gills or by coming to the surface and gulping. If you have Corydora, you may have seen this before. Well, they can also just get out and walk. And like I said, the invasive catfish that are known as walking catfish and here we have the Aspidora, which is related to Corydora catfish, but a little bit longer. And they are able to shoal, but they don't school quite as tightly generally. However, let's keep going and talking about these incredible creatures when we're talking about number eight, the walking catfish fact, which is that they can go up to two miles across land in a single journey. They can stay out of water if it's very humid or if it's raining for up to 18 hours. Some people report as many as 24, but for sure 18 they can stay healthy and move along and go from puddle to puddle. And talking about that amazing smell ability, their barbels, the little barbels known as onodontodes that are on their mouth and face you, you see the males generally have them all over their face and the females have them just on their mouth and snout. They're able to directionally sense with those and they can actually smell fresh water versus dirty water. And that's why in the middle of the desert, they can get out the African catfish as well as the Southeast Asian walking catfish. During the drought or dry season, they can get out and walk two kilometers, three kilometers, and a day or two, and all they need is rain or a little puddle to rejuvenate, and then they can continue on their way. Just an incredible ability. Number nine on our list of facts is going to be that catfish can talk. So you may not think of fish as speaking, but catfish have the ability to make audible noises. And across the various species, they have quite a few different little tricks on how they do speak. And one of the most well-known uh, types of catfish that makes noise is the croaking catfish, like the croaking gourami. Here's a type of gourami while we're on the subject they're able to click a little bone on their body under their armpit near that venom gland where the Corydoras have it under their, their uh, pectoral fin and they're able to rub that and make a creaking noise that sounds like croaking of a frog and that allows them to communicate underwater and during the mating season with other catfish. It's simply an amazing ability that they have. And they can also use what's called a Weberian apparatus, and they can click together these muscles and bones inside of their body and make noise that way. Other species, like the African squeaker catfish, is able to use its own air bladder, which they use for stability, to make squeaking noises and uh, loud pitch noises that they can hear across the water and because high pitch noises travel differently in water and sound can travel much better in water oftentimes many catfish actually have boy this guy's full he's had enough blood worms many catfish have the ability also to make deeper noises by clicking bony parts of their body together so they can click together plates in their mouth, bony plates that are made up of teeth, and that will make a bass noise, whereas the squeaks come from their air bladder. Just incredible, incredible creatures. All right, guys, coming in at number 10 to round off this talk, we have that catfish are found all over the world, and that they have abilities that other fish 
could not even dream of. We have clear catfish like the Thai, want, the Thai glass catfish. We have striped catfish with barbs that are venomous on them. We have uh, poisonous catfish that if eaten are venomous. We have some that can live in mud, fresh water, salt water, and we also have incredible species. This little leopard frog catfish here will grow to about five inches, four inches, fully grown, and have a big pot belly. But out of their diversity, a few more of the incredible things they can do is some of them can have up to 100,000 eggs at a time. There is a Japanese catfish that lives in the ocean that can have up to 100,000 babies at a time. Other catfish have other ways of raising their babies. Some protect the, the babies until their yolk sacs are absorbed, like these plecos do. The Corydoras here, these Corydora, they actually don't protect their young at all. But number 10 really is the multitude of ways that they've evolved is more diverse than any other group of fish. And they have had the ability to produce electricity both through muscle spasms and through creating an electrical field in their own body with an organ that uses static electricity charged up within them that we still don't fully understand. They can use that for echolocation and navigating. They are an incredible fish. They have the ability to breathe out of water, underwater, absorb air through their skin. I mean, you name it, they can do it. Autosynclus, these are another great catfish. If you're in the aquarium hobby, they'll clean your tank for you. They'll clean your rocks for you. And they're just yet another amazing little species of fish. And yet again, here comes another little garami while we're at it. But... I hope you guys enjoyed this list of facts. I know we really did cover a lot more than 10 facts if you count them all, but I wanted to talk about catfish today. All right, guys, so that brings us around to over 10 crazy, amazing, wonderful facts about catfish. I actually have many more species. They're often very shy. And with all the ways they have to communicate and get around and survive, it's no wonder they can be shy. They can get along, they can communicate chemically, auditorily, and how many other ways, who even knows yet. But if you enjoyed this com content, please communicate with me and uh, click that little bell if uh, you haven't remembered to click that and it's something you want to do, you want to be alerted to future videos. And also if you want to support the channel, you can check out the links in the doobly-doo in the description down below. Thanks for spending the time with me. I'll talk to you next time. This has been Alexander Williamson with The Secret History, Living in Your Aquarium, and this was 10 awesome facts about catfish. Talk to you later. Bye.